Welcome to an accessibility tour of Libby version 1.81 on iOS. This video was created with support from the Government of Canada's Social Development Partnerships Program Disability Component. The opinions and interpretations in this video are those of the creator and do not necessarily reflect those of the Government of Canada. It was produced with cited assistance. The Libby app strives to provide access to audiobooks and ebooks from local libraries but lacks accessibility in crucial areas. Before we dive into some suggested improvements, let's take a quick look at why they're important. To get the most out of a smartphone, those who are blind turn on voice feedback. Voice over on. App testing. Heading. Then, they can swipe quickly to different controls on the screen and hear any text that appears. Playbooks. Our digital. Press reader. Libby. Libby. Welcome to open the active title button. In order to navigate a screen effectively, it is important that all buttons be labeled. Controls need to be swipeable, and screens must be clear of hidden text. We will now explore four accessibility challenges with Libby version 1.8.1 on iOS. We will explore focus issues with pop-up menus, show a number of unlabeled buttons and the difficulties this results in, demonstrate voiceover speaking invisible text, and highlight the challenges faced when attempting to actually read books. When a menu or feature is activated, the previous screen is slid over to form an inactive background. This is a common practice throughout the app, but presents a major challenge for voiceover users. Instead of being positioned on the new controls, the user is left stranded on the previous screen. A prime example of this is the menu button. When activated, it expands with options such as Add a Library and Learn Libby. Open audiobook. Page 1 of 3. Page 1 of 3. Menu. Button. Menu. However, instead of being able to swipe to these options, we can only navigate the original screen. See all three. Zero per download it. Do. Open up. Cover it. J. R. R. Tolkien. The only way to access the menu field is to tap on the top right of the screen. Play jumping forward and backward recommended button. Then swipe through its controls. You are at Vancouver with one card period. See library cards button. This is problematic because blind users will not know where the menu is or even that they have to tap it. Furthermore, when swiping through a screen when a pop-up is displayed, its options mingle with the existing content. Find out, Libya, set up, Newler, help, Libwalk, shelf, loans, hole, tag, actions, button. This makes it almost impossible to tell which controls are part of the pop-up. Unfortunately, backfield interference is another serious concern. Occasionally, voiceover will mistakenly read text and controls that are no longer visible. We refer to this phenomenon as backfield interference. It occurs when new controls are painted over existing ones, without first clearing the screen of its old content. Here, we'll demonstrate one area where backfield interference is prevalent. It's important to note, though, that this issue does crop up randomly and persistently throughout the entire app. When we no longer need the menu, we click Hide. Hide. But However, the menu controls are still exposed to voiceover. Play jumping. You are at Vancouver with one card. Period. See library cards button. Being prompted to interact with controls that do not exist represents a level of frustration rarely experienced elsewhere. Please ensure that each screen of your user interface is free and clear of old controls and text. The audio player is not usable due to many compounding accessibility issues. When we press the open button from the bookshelf. Image for page three of three. Open audiobook. Oh, you are at open. The screen that comes up is littered with countless controls. Their labels make no sense to a voiceover user, and most controls don't seem to correspond to actual functions. In addition to being unlabeled, many important controls, such as the play button, are skipped when using voiceover swipe gesture. Left curl button. One. The E. J. By the Lord, not in form, time, left, done, overview, view title details, button, library, shelf, button. 
These issues represent an insurmountable barrier to access for non-visual readers. Unless important buttons are labeled, meaningless controls are removed, the screen can be logically navigated with the swipe gesture, and icons are enlarged so they can be easily found by touch, blind readers will be unable to listen to audiobooks with Libby. Sadly, reading ebooks is equally difficult. Like button 15 button you are a library shelf button you are a shelf cover image for book treasure island button open book oh you are at open no buttons are labeled button 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 40 paces farther we came button and continued use of the feature introduces serious backfield interference. The multi-step process of accessing the list of chapters is far too complex, and unlabeled buttons combine with focus challenges to render it unusable. If a user does manage to select a new chapter, a voiceover usually reads the wrong page. Finally, it is not possible to scroll the book using voiceover's three-finger gesture, VoiceOver doesn't even recognize the button at the far right of the screen, so VoiceOver users will have no idea how to turn pages. It takes a lot of time and hard work to produce an app of this caliber, and we appreciate your willingness to explore increasing its accessibility. The modifications requested here can be made without impacting the visual look and feel of the interface, but will be greatly appreciated by those reading your content with speech.